Good morning, everyone. Uh, I just want to say that it's uh, it's been a couple days and things have been going really great here at Kelton. Um, we've been doing some uh, work and if you've had a chance to look at our Facebook page or my Facebook page, you will see that we've almost completely finished the, the um, vestibule. Uh, Larry Steiner is putting some final touches to it, but um, I think it's pretty much done. He might be solidifying it a little bit more and taking away from some of the uh, uh, the air leak that's coming in. But other than that, it's looking really great. Hi, Karen. Good morning. Um, what I want to say is, is first of all, the uh, the sermon this week is hi, Sean. Good morning. Uh, is called God's courtroom. Um, the scripture reference is Romans 3, 9 through 20. And what we're going to be looking at is how God is just, justifier, and judge. And what this means is, is that God is in charge. He's in charge of everything, and he's always been in charge. He's never going to change. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, and he was way before the beginning of time, and he'll be there way after the end of time. Time isn't something that God looks at specifically and you should be glad that he doesn't because if we were to go specifically by his time we wouldn't have any idea what was going on uh, because it says that it uh, one day is like a thousand years in God's eyes uh, good morning Scott so as we get into the scripture today um, if you have the time to open up to Romans 3 verses 9 through 20 that's where we're gonna look and it's good to hear that you're still alive I'm glad you survived the storm um, also, please uh, remember to pray for the people that are still in um, the path of uh, Irma that's coming. And always remember to pray for the victims that were down in the Houston area. Um, Scott is one of those people that was down there in that area. He may not have been affected as many as much, but I'm sure him and his family were affected. We're glad, we're glad that you are, are here and uh, doing well, Scott, and that's good to hear. Um, I do want to just say a real, a real quick word of prayer uh, before we begin our lesson. I did mention that last week, and I think that if we go to God in prayer, it'll make the lesson a lot more smoothing, smoothly running. So if you would bow with me for just a moment of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this time that we have together to study your word. Lord, help um, everyone that opens the word of God to be able to see it come to life in front of them. Um, Lord, we know that you are in charge and that you are the creator. You are the one who makes all the decisions. Um, but we do know that we're creatures of choice and you allow us to be um, and to have our own will. Lord, we ask that you continue to always, as you always have been, to, to be just, to be the judge and to be the jury in many cases. And Lord, we ask that you give us justice, but at the same time, Lord, that you give us mercy. Um, because the only true just thing that we would be uh, is to die in our sin. Lord, thank you so much for everything you do for us. Uh, be with this presenter as he presents your word. Help him to do so in a humble way. And if you were to ever to get in the way of your message, help him to get out of the way and let you speak. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. All right, um, let's go right into the scripture. Um, we're going to look at Romans chapter 3, verse 9 through 20. Romans is in the New Testament, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to look and see, as we look at Romans chapter 3, we'll see what this has to do with God being judge and just and being just, uh, the justice as well, and, and showing justice. In chapter 3, verses 9, the writer of Romans begins, which is Paul, What shall we conclude then? Do we have any advantage? Not at all. For we already made charge that the Jews and the Gentiles alike are under the power of sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, no, not one. Oh, absolutely, yes. Um, and, and it was good having you, Scott, and I will definitely pray for those those folks as well um, at the end of this lesson. 
I hope you are have a safe trip, and uh, if you want to stay and listen, you can. You don't have to to you know stay on and 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 comment. That's fine. Um, picking up where we left off, there is one. There is no one righteous. No, not even one. There is no one who understands, and there was no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They all have together become worthless. There is no one who is who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues are practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways, and the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know whatever the law says. It says to those that are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our own sins. Let's look at something there. We need to know that our righteousness, as, uh, as it says in Scripture, are that of filthy rags. If it was just us, we would be lost in our sins. But because of Christ, we have this particular right because of his sacrifice. If you look at Deuteronomy chapter 32, Deuteronomy is way, way, way back at the beginning of the Bible. Uh, it's actually the third book of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, oh, wait, wait, uh, fifth book, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the fifth book. And as you look at Deuteronomy uh, chapter 32, verse 4, I want you to see that it describes God in the way that he needs to be described, and it, it describes what God is. In verse 4, it says, He is the rock, his works are perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright, and just is he. So, if he's righteous and he does not do wrong, and he is upright and just, then this means that God is the only one who can be righteous. Jesus says there's no man who's good except for the Father who is in heaven. You can call no man good because of that. So if we look at it this way and we look at just being God being just, he's righteous. He doesn't change. He always stays the same. He was the same at the beginning and he'll be the same way, way, way when time ends because he is just. Now let's look at Ezra 9.15. In Ezra 9.15, we see, and we're going to have a, a few scriptures, and I'll actually add those on for you like I do at the, uh, the end of each lesson. Um, the reason I'm, I'm not going to take the time to do that right now is I want to make sure you get a lesson and, and not just have me type a whole bunch of stuff for you and then um, you don't have a time to research it yourself. In Ezra 9, verse 15, the writer says, Lord, the Lord of God of Israel, you are righteous. We are left this day as a remnant. Here we are before you in our guilt, though because of it not one of us can stand in your presence. So, hi, hi Shane, how are you? Um, because of this, God says that he's righteous and because we are in our guilt we can't stand in his presence he's the promise keeper though and the way that he's the promise keeper is because he always goes by what he says and because of his righteousness he's just now let's look at revelation chapter 19 verse 2 revelation is the last book in the bible John is the revelator. Of course, it's inspired by God that he did it. But let's look at Revelation chapter 19. It's not revelations. It's one revelation given to John. So it's only revelation. 
There wasn't many that happened, and that's why we say Revelation, the book of Revelation versus the book of Revelations. Revelation 19.2 says, For true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. So here he's just and true in his judgments. And because of that, we know that he does not change. Everything that he does remains the same. He doesn't change his mind. At the beginning of that, it's um, in verse 1, the end part of verse 1 actually would be part B. It says, salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for true and just are his judgments. Now, if he tells us the truth, and if he is somebody who is just, and we're going to look at the Greek word here in a minute for what justice or just is, then you'll be able to tell what he represents. Our Greek word is dikosene. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And what it is, is that the short definition is justice, justness, or righteousness. Um, <clears throat> we know that God is the only righteousness in which the source of the author of the Bible could be described. In practicality, he's the divine righteousness. So, as we look at the various verses here, we're seeing how God's courtroom is always going to be just, but it doesn't always seem like it's going to be fair to us. God is always going to be a judge that is just. Now, let's look at the second part of this, and it's the word judge. Because a judge needs to be just. Yes, he needs to have mercy, but at the same time, he always needs to make sure that he stays impartial. That he always looks at his people and he's able to make a decision based on iniquity or sin, based on guilt or innocence. And if we only were to be given our judgment on just our righteousness, it would be that of filthy rags, which I mentioned earlier. And if it's that of filthy rags, it's not worth anything to God. Only Jesus alone gives that just ability to give us the innocence that we have because of his innocence and his sacrifice. Let's look at James chapter 4, verse 12. James is just a few chapters away from Revelation. And as we look at James, we're going to see in, in James 4.12 another description of God. And what he is in this is he's the presenter. Hi, Dan. How are you? Um, he's the presenter or the rewarder. And then, or excuse me, he, he decides the guilty or the innocent. I'm sorry. Um, in James 4.12, the writer says... There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Now, what the writer of James is saying here is only God has the right to decide guilt or innocence. He's the only one who has the ability to write the law. And because he's the only one who has the right, the ability to write the law, He's the only one who has the right to judge or to give judgment on someone. So, as we put things together, we know that he's righteous, that he's a promise keeper, that he doesn't change. In that, he is able to make the decision because he's the writer of the law on who is guilty or innocent. Now, look, let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. And as we look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, we're going to see something here that you may or may not know. And what 2 Timothy 4, 8 says is that 
Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but to all who have longed to see his appearing. So, if we do... Hi, uh, Denise, how are you this morning? Uh, it's great to have you all, by the way. If I miss any of your names, I apologize. Uh, I'm trying to to give a proper recognition to the scripture. And as that, I may not see you right away. But I will try to acknowledge you. Um, 2 Timothy 4.8, it says that there's a reward coming... And because of his justness, if that's a word, and because of his righteousness and because of Jesus' sacrifice and because God is a promise keeper and he doesn't change, he becomes the presenter and the rewarder of those who seek after him and obey his son. And wait and, and watch for him as he's coming. And keep that in mind. Jesus is coming back. Now, let's look at Acts chapter 17, verse 31. And this will close out our study on just judge. Acts 17, 31. As we look at Acts 17, 31, we're going to be looking at God's knowledge because in order to be the writer and the author of the Word of God, the Bible, he has to have knowledge of everything and to be all-knowing. And because of this, you'll see in 1731, it speaks of him only knowing the day. And what it says is, what the Word says in Acts 1731 is, For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man that he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. Continuing on with verse 32, when they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, but others said, we want to hear you again on this subject. Now this is where Paul and Barnabas are misunderstood. And because of this, they, um, they actually have to correct them in their wrong. But this says that God, again, is all-knowing. So that closes out the judge part of it. The last thing we're going to look at in this lesson is Romans 3, verses 24 and 26. And this says that God has the ability and he has the just, he's the justifier who can fix or acquits the sinner because he's the one who writes the law. Romans 3, Romans follows Acts if you're reading along right before 1 Corinthians. Romans 3 verses 24 and 26. Romans 23, 24 and 26 says, And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. 26 says, he did, not, he did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. So him being the justifier, the justifier, he has the ability to make the decision on whether to convict us of our sin and transgressions and our iniquity or to acquit us based on his own righteousness through his son's sacrifice. Does that make you think about your salvation? Because it should. Because one day if you're going to stand in God's proverbial courtroom and stand before this just judge who is also justifier, then you better be ready for when he comes. Right? The only true way we can be ready is to obey the commandments that have been given to us. To listen to what Jesus says. 
to listen to the examples of the apostles and the teachers of old. And what you can look at there is when there's truth given, truth cannot be denied. The truth that I can tell you is this, is Jesus is the only truth and he's the only one who can set you free from your sin. With that in mind, there is a command given. Many like to shortcut it and not always follow through with what it says. In Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, Jesus says, All authority has been given to me on heaven and earth. Go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, continuing to obey all that I've commanded you, and teaching, and lo, I will be with you always, even till the end of the earth. What Jesus said is, he says to make disciples. That means to go out and teach people. To